All right, guys, welcome to the video today. In this one, I'm gonna be speaking about what I would personally do if I was a beginner with no experience of training at all, but kind of retain the knowledge that I have now. What methods would I employ in order to get myself up to the level that I'm now at? One thing I've always been really keen to focus on is having super clean and efficient technique that looks really sharp. It looks like something out of a movie or an anime or a video game or something. And whether this was kind of like a conscious thing that I was aware I was doing at the time or I was just sort of like intuitively drawn to those methods, there's definitely been certain things looking back over my own journey of training that I have used that have really taken me closer to that. And also I'm aiming to kind of answer this question that I'm getting quite commonly nowadays which is from people that are just starting out in martial arts or they've got very little experience and they say to me like I'm really struggling to kind of balance my martial arts training with some other form of training as well so hopefully I'll be able to tie those all together and if you want any more help with this personally then I do offer coaching you can book at the link below if you want any personal help with this that's a little bit more focused on your own specific goals then you can book in the link below now obviously I'm going to be biased about this but I think martial arts training is something that absolutely everybody should do especially young men it's going to give you fitness obviously it'll develop your self-confidence you'll start to feel really good about yourself you're overcoming challenge you're developing a brotherhood with your training partners you're learning a skill so martial arts is like a big skill that is built from a multitude of other skills which is why I think it's so amazing it's just something that I think no other sport gives even if it's just like casual or just for a bit of fun and fitness it can really change your life now the very first thing I want to speak about is do not worry about looking for perfect methods especially advanced ones because they are just not applicable it's kind of like a fat guy thinking that in order to start losing weight he needs to do like dehydration like an on-stage bodybuilder would do when really he hasn't even started like eating healthily and training consistently what I think is a big problem is people are getting this completely the wrong way around and before they even start they're looking for this like perfect methodology and they just get stuck in a loop of like researching training methods and not taking any action so I want you to take action which is why in this video I'm gonna aim to provide a framework for you to follow so that you've got no excuses basically you can just kind of start to implement stuff in small ways and build yourself from there. As a beginner, the basic techniques are gonna make up the bulk of your training and physical development, and that's even applicable to me now after many years of training. So when you start out, you're gonna see a big improvement over the first few months as you start to use those muscles and develop your body in that way. The more advanced things are not only harder to implement, but they provide smaller and smaller gains. So as you get better, the slower and the harder it is to make improvements. And if you think about this, like where you would be in a year of consistent actions every day, they don't have to be massive. It doesn't sound like that long, but that really adds up that consistency as opposed to say if you did nothing at all and you were thinking about it each year, you might know loads more stuff, but until you put it into action, none of it's going to matter. The main thing that you need to do starting out, which kind of goes against these motivational talks when they're like, yeah, it needs to be really hard, bro, and stuff like that. I think it should be easy because that means that you're going to enjoy yourself starting out. If you absolutely go and batter yourself in the gym, you're not going to want to go again and you need it to be easy so you're going to be able to adhere to the program and see progression. If you don't see progression and you're not enjoying yourself, you're not going to have any motivation to continue doing it. I don't really do much in-person coaching anymore, but on the rare occasion I will work with somebody. I do like to correct their technique if there's anything major going on, like any major flaws that need correcting, but generally I'll just let somebody kind of progress on their own terms because they need to feel that sense of progression. If they're always worried about what they're doing wrong all the time, they're never going to get into that flow and start enjoying themselves, and that's going to really halt the progression. There's a certain sense of self-expression that needs to happen where people kind of let go when they're training and just enjoy it. I really believe that that is the best way to progress rather than hyper-focusing on all of the errors that you're making. So how do you know what actually to practice? Now, I'm gonna give lots of different pointers of things you can do in this video that are gonna be things you can train alone, but I would heavily suggest you finding a decent martial arts school or an instructor that can help you. Just make sure they're not some crazy like McDojo instructor who's just looking to rip you off and sell belts to you and stuff like that. I don't think this is completely applicable forever though because starting out, I did type Taekwondo and it was great initially but it just got quite stagnant as I went through the belts and I kind of found more benefit just meeting up with different people and training hard but you've got to have that drive within yourself to do that some people need the classes and they need to continually go to the classes all the time I think I was lucky in the sense that I was always very passionate about martial arts in my own terms and I think even if I didn't go to classes I probably would have trained just as hard anyway what I would say is even more preferable to that if you can afford it is to work with a private coach so one-on-one -on -one or with a very small group so I currently am working with a boxing coach and he allows me to work upon the things I want to work on he doesn't just say you must do this is quite free 
and he just sort of helps me with the things I want to personally develop. On top of working with a private coach or attending classes, you're also gonna need to do quite a bit of training off your own back as well. If you wanna see that real progression, classes are only usually like once or twice a week or something, and that's better than nothing, but it's never gonna get you to that really high level. So I would suggest working with friends or kind of meeting a group of people who are also very passionate. It's much easier to do than kind of trying to motivate yourself on your own all the time. When I say that, I don't want you to think that it has to be daily, like savage training where you're destroying your body every single day. It can just be a little bit, some technique repetitions, a little bit of fitness, that consistency will take you so far over time. The reason I talk so much about basic techniques is because they're like, you've probably heard this example before, but they're like the foundation of a house that you build. All things like the wallpaper, the plaster, the electrics and stuff like that are these things that you add on top, but they can't be added until sort of the basic framework's there. And that's exactly the same with training. Until you've got those basic techniques down, then doing any other advanced stuff on top of that is not, is just not gonna work. It's not gonna be applicable and you're not gonna get any benefit from it. This is certainly not something that you do and you kind of arrive at this destination. It's not like a one and done. You'll continue to work on those same basics throughout your whole training journey, continue to refine them, refine them as you go. At this stage of the game, you need to consider volume. So how much volume of training can you pack in to your week, for instance? If you wanna see anything more on this and quite an in-depth explanation of how I personally go about this, you can see my video, which is linked in the description on how I train every day. Now we've covered those basic techniques, I'm gonna talk about some ways to practice. And I like to do a mixture of different things in my sessions. Some of my favorite ones are shadow boxing. So for shadow boxing, you wanna start nice and relaxed and just throw some of the basic strikes. You can visualize an opponent throwing strikes towards you in order to prompt your responses. Or you can even use your own strikes for that as well. So if I throw a jab cross, for instance, then the next thing I do might be an evasion or a counter to those strikes. Using pads for accuracy. And if you're training with one of your friends as well, it can be really good to switch around. As being able to hold the pads effectively is kind of like a skill within itself and really helps with timing and rhythm as well. And obviously if you're both good at holding pads then you're both going to be able to help each other progress more effectively. You want to use a decent solid heavy bag to develop your power and endurance. And I used to use one of those wave master things before I actually had access to a decent heavy bag but I noticed my power and like the muscles in my shoulders and stuff really started popping out once I was able to apply my weight behind those punches. And then you can do drills with a friend as well where you know you'll throw a certain set of techniques and you practice head movement and defense and obviously sparring which I'll be covering more later on. I want to talk about a little bit of a training hack that I've always liked to use and that's filming yourself training. Get your phone out, film yourself doing some techniques because unless you're really super delusional then you're going to know whether your technique looks good or bad. People often like to shadow box in the mirror which can be helpful but when you can see how you're moving from different angles if you film it, it can really speed up that progression much quicker in my opinion. So the bulk of your development is going to come from training just in the activity and my own body looks the way it does just through training martial arts and similar sort of activities. I want to be really fit for purpose, that's what I've always aimed to do, but it can help to have sort of like a basic condition routine, something to do on your days off or at the end of your training, say after you've done your technique work and skill specific work. So I like to do routines with these kinds of exercises that are a sort of mid to high intensity. Now it's not the level of hit which is supposed to be absolutely full out. I like to do it this way and hit multiple areas so I'm able to develop my muscles but also my cardio and endurance at the same time. Everyone's going to be different with this depending on their fitness level but the way I would describe this is like I could speak to you in short sentences but it would become increasingly more difficult the more of it I do. I'm not like absolutely gas to where I can barely breathe but I'm not just like walking in the park either. If you want some full workouts like this that you can follow along with I did do some on my Instagram page in the past you'll have to scroll down a little bit but they are definitely on there. Now let's talk about training with other people so obviously if you go to a class you're going to meet other like-minded individuals that are going to be on the same journey as you. And when I used to train Taekwondo, like when I used to go to the classes, there was a group of us who were a similar age, we all went to school together, but then we'd meet up as well during the week and just train on a field together, like hit some pads, just train some kicks and just kind of mess about. But I think that's like the best way to progress is when you're having fun and you're training without really knowing that you're actually training. If you do meet a group of people like this, then I highly suggest you start doing some sparring with each other straight away, but do it in the right way. Don't be stupid with it and try and take each other's heads off. You're aiming to progress, so make it technical. You need to be exposed to that stress of combat so that you can become accustomed to it. You don't want to just do it every now and then because you're never going to get to that level where it feels a bit more comfortable and it's always going to be very stressful for you. There's a friend of mine locally who I've been helping to get into shape a little bit more and I've taught him some of the basic boxing techniques. We've been working on those together as well as just general fitness stuff. But I've already been doing some light, very light sparring with him just to kind of expose him to how the techniques actually work and he's really enjoying it. He said it's actually his favourite thing to do and I agree, like sparring is one of the most beneficial things that you can 
can do. It just gets you into such a focused state. You literally can't think about anything else. It's a natural thing that's gonna make you nervous. But exposing yourself to that voluntarily is just something that I think cannot be overstated how important that is. Now you wanna work with people of all different skill levels. So obviously people who are on a similar journey to you, a similar level, and you can progress together that way. But if you can find them, try and work with somebody who's much better than you as well, but is understanding what you're trying to do and is gonna be able to help you out. And this is where, like I said earlier, if you've got a private coach, that can come very much in handy because they're there to help you. They're there to help you progress in that way as well. Now you're obviously gonna need some kind of stretching routine and it doesn't have to be anything complicated. I would do a static stretching routine three times a week. And what I do are these exercises that I'm doing here. I would hold them for 30 seconds each then shake it off, get the blood flowing back into your body a little bit more and then go back into the exercises and hold for another 30. I would do that for four sets of each exercise and try and do dynamic stretching every single day if you can or four to five times a week. It's just something quick and easy to do. And I'd also do that before training as well. Now starting out for a routine, I think it's important to keep it very, very simple. We've already discussed that the basics are gonna make up the majority of the things you do in your training sessions. So if you work in heavy bag, it's gonna be the basics on the heavy bag, or if you're working with a friend doing pads, that's gonna be the same thing there. There's a few different ways I would suggest to do this. Now what I would do is, if you're not really doing anything else, I would focus primarily on martial arts and I would do it five to six days a week. What I like to do personally is just do hand techniques, so boxing and elbows one day, and then the next day I'll do hand and leg techniques together. So I like to work on my hands more because they are just the weapons that you're gonna use the most, so it makes, it makes sense to work on them more. So I'd go about it that way and then I would build a little bit of conditioning onto the end of that. So an example routine might be you do some rounds of jump rope first, then you do some shadow boxing rounds, then you do some bag rounds, and then at the end you do a little bit of conditioning. And this is very similar to what I'm doing at the moment. And obviously you can switch that around a bit. You can do sparring instead of the bag, for instance, or pads if you're with a friend or whatever. Or alternatively, if you're also doing another form of training, like if you're weightlifting or something and you're trying to balance the martial arts practice in there, I would do the martial arts specific stuff three times a week. And I wouldn't do any conditioning on the end of it, or at least very, very minimal because you're already fulfilling that on the other days. So I'd say do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, martial arts specific training, and then say Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, it could be your weight training. So you can kind of get in that split in between of the different sessions. I can't obviously give a super personalized plan because your circumstances are gonna be different if you don't have a consistent training partner, then you're not gonna be able to spar as much or do pads. But if you've got that, try and get as much sparring in as you can as well, like three or four times a week if you can, if, if you find a friend who's really passionate as well. But if not, just try and make do with something else and get that in when you can. Now we're gonna talk about stoking the fire of inspiration, which is something that cannot be overstated enough because if you're not inspired, then you're not gonna do any of the other things that I mentioned. So inspiration is key. You need to wanna do it. You need to be excited to do it and having fun while you're doing it. You wanna think about having a big grand vision of something you'd like to achieve. Like, and don't play it small either. Like think what if, if I was in an alternative reality and I could just click my fingers and be like as skilled as I want, what would that be? Now that has to be a grand vision, something you think on daily, use that to visualize, feel how it would be to be that person right now, and use that to generate good feelings and excitement to then take into your training. But at the same time, you don't want to allow that thing to be so far away in the future that it kind of demoralizes you in the present. So you wanna use it as something to look towards, but don't let the feelings of like, oh, I'm so far away from that, I don't know if I'm ever gonna get to that, work against you, because that can happen as well. I used to always be into really action-packed stuff when I was young, like martial arts movies and play video games, and that was always a massive inspiration to me. It's almost like a hack, in a sense, to training, because if you get that excitement, then it's almost like you'll just go out and train off your own back. You don't have to motivate yourself to do it. It's like you're pulled to do it, rather than something you have to push yourself to do. And kids are really, really effective at doing this because they haven't yet received that sort of like societal and adult conditioning that tells them things are impossible and they just think they can do anything. I literally believed when I was young that I was the people in the films. Like I would think I was like Jet Li or Bruce Lee and go out and just train and I probably looked ridiculous when I was 10 years old doing it and it was technically all over the place, but who cares really? Like it worked in the end because it drew me to better training methods over time. And I honestly believe, although it sounds kind of crazy, that that was probably the most important thing that I ever did, although it was sort of like an unconscious strategy that has led me to where I am today. 
You're going to get a boost of inspiration when you start off. Everything's always like that. It's really exciting at first. But a few weeks in or a month or so in, you're going to start to get a little bit bored with what you're doing because in martial arts, because it's a skill like anything, a lot of it is just repeating the same thing over and over again. So you need to stoke that fire of inspiration consistently. You need to buy in more to what you're doing in order to want to continue doing it. I always like to just watch videos of boxers or sometimes that kind of inspiration will get me even when I'm not expecting it. I'll even listen to like a song or something and then it really pumps me up and I want to go training. So find out what works for you and what's going to make you want to go and do the things that are necessary to get to where you want to go. It doesn't matter how skilled you already are or what you can already do, it still can just become really boring like the kind of high of having a certain skill set isn't something that's going to like keep you elated forever. People say that if you, you know, buy a Lamborghini, you're going to be super high and pumped up for a few weeks. Like, yeah, I got the Lambo and stuff. But then in a few months, it's just your car and you're kind of used to it. So our brain is always going to reset to like a new normal. So you have to consistently raise the bar for yourself and inspire yourself. And with that big vision, you want to have these kind of smaller goals that you build into that as well. So you've got like your big North Star vision, that's something in the future you're aiming towards, like the dream goal. But then that can seem so far away that you kind of like don't know what to do in the middle. So have a look at that goal and then have a think about like the person who achieves this goal, like what is his identity? What are his habits? What does he do? Now those are gonna be things like martial arts specific things like, oh, he works on his boxing this day, he's kicking this day and you build that into your routine. But there might be other things in there as well. This person has a consistent sleep schedule. He likes to meditate, he eats healthy to keep his body in condition for the training. You can shape yourself into this person. And that's really exciting to me, I feel like. It's something I've done quite a few times there's always a bar that you can raise and you can always become better you need to basically feel like that person now not in the future it's not when I get to this goal I'll be happy you need to feel those emotions now and you will draw those things to you over time like I said before I think martial arts is something that absolutely everybody should do it is such a good skill it's like the perfect tool of just expressing your human potential in my opinion so thanks very much for watching and like I said before, if you would like any personalised help with this, you can book a coaching call with me. The link is in the description below and I will see you in the next video.